Hey everyone, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Today, we're touring the store, but we're starting with Murphy. He's quite the ham these days. And uh, we got some bigger clams for him, because he eats full on, not clams on the half shell anymore, but frozen, like gotta buy it from the grocery store type clams. But it takes him longer to get through them, so he's gotta do a little bit of work. He says, that's still frozen. Wait for it. You want to back up? Is that the problem? There we go. You can do it. All right, I'll get you the easier clams. You showed him, Murphy. Of course, now he goes for I go around the corner. I'm gonna put three more in there. These are big boy clams. Let them defrost though, and don't don't bite me. There, they're not against the glass for you, so you can work them. Whoa. So you got to give him the crunchy clams so that he'll um, wear down his teeth. That's a big one. The half, the clams on the half shell make it easy. This makes him struggle for it, which is good for him. Come on, this one will be easier. You got one right over here. Get that one. So this is a 360 gallon tank. He's getting to be, you know, closing on two feet here because front to back we're four feet. So from here to here. I know the minute I turn this camera off, he's gonna eat them. Let me, uh, let me pretend I don't care if you eat them. Let's see if he eats them. You can still, the problem is I can see like 30 feet outside the tank. So he's still, he yep, yeah, look at him, look at him. Mm-hmm. I didn't raise a troll at all. All right, we're like done making you eat your veggies. You can have the easy ones, they're like potato chips now that you just, you don't struggle with at all. You probably know them. You'll be like, oh, these are the ones I like. Look at this. I like those ones, oh, Dad. Wow. Yeah, you like the easy ones. Those don't trim your teeth down though. All right, so we're gonna get started on the store tour here, and being summer, we always do discus because they stay nice and warm during shipping. So we've got clown loaches and discus down low in a 55. We just run them with a hang on back and some sponge filters. We still heat it up, like it's gonna be about 85 in there. Um, these guys, we run anywhere from 54 to 75, which it's been crazy with COVID. Everything's pushing prices up, shipping's going up, and something we used to be able to sell for 30 is now 55, and that's just the way it's gotta be at the moment. You know, I hope to see prices come down, but rarely do they, so. Up above, we have just a little planted tank. This used to be filled with nothing but neons, but then we couldn't get neons for a few months. And so, we had to sell the neons, and now we've got a community tank going. If you wanna see, you know, a super small tank, this is a three gallon betta setup. Just a little red bed in there and uh, you know, some shrimp. You can see size for scale here. That's, that's in a mono shrimp to how big this tank is, you know. So it's not a very big tank at all. But, you know, it's like to show people what can be done. Over here we've got the candy cane tetra, which they're a fun one. You know, with the red and the white. I don't know if candy cane is the right word for it, but and then we hadn't seen these in, in like a couple years, so we brought in the Golden Wonder Killies. Big jumpers, so careful with that. Oh, here's a hairy puffer. Yeah. These guys are ambush predators. He doesn't like the camera. 
but they call me Harry Puffer because I get that beard. Come here, beardy. Like everything else right now, I swear last time I worked the store, we sold these guys for 50 bucks. Now it's 130 bucks. But already on hold, someone's buying it. Like it's really hard to get some of this stuff right now. Nothing's coming in from the wild because it's hard to get flights, so. Scarlet Badass, hanging out with all these cherry shrimp. This is just the normal grade of cherry shrimp we sell, which in my opinion is a very good grade. We only buy the top quality shrimp we can get a hold of. And so we sell these guys at seven bucks. You know, a lot of stores will sell lesser grade or a couple of grades. I think we should, you know, because people are gonna take us home, we're gonna breed it. I, that's what I wanna see. You can see how red it is from here on that green uh, Java moss mats. I just think that's, that should be the sta industry standard right here. I think this is what cherry shrimp should just be. There shouldn't be lesser grades. If it's lesser, just, sh you know, like work to get better. That's what's gotta happen. I think about that with all the shrimp, we should be constantly working to get better. Down low, we've got some of my favorites, long fin white clouds. Once I get to my new house, I'm for sure setting up a pond of these. I love them. I should, these are grown out too. It's rare that you get them that they're grown out. If I wasn't moving in the next like couple of days, I would take some home, but I'm, I'm literally just taking fish home that I have to move. You know what, I do have a goldfish pond though. Maybe, maybe I'll do it anyway. I'm crazy like that. Norman Lamp, I kill these over here. These guys have a nice blue eye. They look at you from across the room. Red lizard cats, I haven't seen those in, the red lizards, I haven't seen them in like two years. Yeah, these little buddies are like a nano whiptail cat. They're super cool. Only problem is they run like, well, last time we sold them, yeah, they were 20 bucks, now they're 27 bucks, but you know, everything's on the way up, I guess. Ooh, nanochromus transvestitis hiding in the coconut cave with, with moss. Well, algae, really. There's the male there, the female going, oh gosh, help. And then a bunch of big Congo tetras up above, so. Over here, this is the local plant selection. So this is like a very miniature version of what we got going on in the warehouse. If you see plants here that you like, we sell all of these and more online, so. You can see we've got CO2 pumping in the tanks and we've got purling on all the plants. Scarlet Temple here. And even down low, something as simple as an Amazon sword also purling. So that just helps convert it. Cause all right now, almost all of this has been grown emer, so out of water. And we're gonna convert it to growing underwater leaves. So like all these wider leaves right here, grown out of water, this new tiny leaf in the very center, new growth. So same with like that red leaf coming out of the, the center of that one, new growth. And that's what we got to focus on. Sometimes we repair plants, like these came in really bad and we've been out for a couple of months. So we had to sit on them and now we've got some pink flamingo. These are fully co converted though. So someone locally will be super happy to pick those up. Expensive plant, 25 bucks, but hey, it's a good one. Pogo, and in general, we're still, we still have a lot of blank spots because it's hard to get plants in too. So we keep selling out online. But we do what we can. We also have a new promo in the store. You spend 100 bucks or more, you get a free pack of frozen food. Because we were doing free shipping with 100 bucks online, we thought, how can we give back to local customers? That's how we figured it out. Next, maybe we'll do a quick walk on the beta wall. So, Here's basically 200 bettas and every variety you could, maybe, well not every variety, a bunch. If you can't find a betta you want here, you got bigger problems if you're looking for a betta. Crown Tail City through here. This makes it hard too because the virus, we have less traffic through here, so recycling through less bettas so if you're looking for something super high end. Um, you know, like some of these have been sitting around for a little while, like this guy is 15% off, but he looks amazing. Like that's, a, that's an amazing half moon. So, you know, just because someone doesn't like it today. Look at this guy. Oh, he's a staff pick, no wonder. That guy is awesome. I wonder what, I, I haven't asked, but I wonder how often people are like, oh, give me the moss ball with it. That's a good... I would, I'd bring his buddy along. 
But yeah, we'll have Jimmy get ultimate B-roll of all these. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I want all of them, Jimmy. But it's so hard to, to focus in on each one and get a meaningful shot. So you just, you know, you got to, it's, you, you do it, you know, we've got wild type here too, but you do it, you just kind of, people shot for an hour or so when they're looking at bettas going, well, what type do I get? And then, so there's these wild types here, and then eventually you'll go over there and you'll be like, wait, there's more wild types in the tanks too? How can I decide? This guy's amazing right here. A good looking one. I'm drawn to that dark color and the red with it. But if you just stand here, eventually you just keep seeing more and more. You'll be like, what's this one? What's that one? Look this guy. is nice and dark. All right. So also at the store, we have returned lights. So what happens here is someone buys it. Most often, they will buy a... Uh, like this is meant for a 10 gallon tank and they go, oh my gosh, it's way too bright. And they return it to us. So this has been used for a total of like six minutes and we already paid $20 shipping once and uh, we sell it at a discount. I can't remember what the current discount is. I think it's somewhere around 25% and it still offers the same warranties as we would normally have on any brand new light, but we don't want to, obviously we've never throw it away. We don't necessarily have a use for that light at the moment. So we just kind of stack them up and go, hey, who's looking for deals? Ask store manager go, hey, you got anything sitting in the back? And sometimes we do. Ooh, my Vienna guppies are here and they're looking good. I know Robert asked me if I had more. We're down to one single pair. Ooh, and a neat cichlid? Neotropolis. What's cool about these, I haven't had these in 10 years. These guys are a tiny cichlid that's full grown and they take care of dovi babies in the wild. So they take care of one of the biggest, like apex predator cichlids, their fry. These guys are very cool. No one's gonna buy them, but they're super cool. I love that fish. So maybe a couple people come get a couple groups of six and we'll sell out, but that's an underappreciated fish, rare too. Neon Tetra Tank, we always have this one going when we can get them, looking good. Up top. A big school of silver tip tetras. Now, when I put my hand up there, they're gonna go nuts. Yep, that's what they do. If you can get a big school of them, they're really fun to play with. But I find it's at least 40 of them or so. You get 20, and you're going, they're not doing their thing. Yeah, you need more of them, so. Huh, look at that. There's air coming out the side of my sponge. I gotta make my employees watch my video on how to, uh, how to calibrate a sponge filter. All right, what else we got that's interesting to me today? Albino cribs, I can, if you want to breed a fish, this is a pretty easy one to breed. Male and females are easy to sex. Actually, looks like we have quite a few males sitting around here. The females will have a nice pink belly, so it looks like real male heavy. I gotta get mine to crank out some. Kubota rasbora, or the neon green rasbora. These guys are looking good with gobies and similis cories, am I right? Yeah, similis cories. Those guys get bigger than that. They just look real small right now. How much are they? $12? That's good. That's, they're worth that. Panda cories, Pristilla tetras. That's a real hardy tetra. Good one. Super red. Well, they're just long fin serpe tetras, but they're nice and red colored. Of course, the standard cardinal tetras. We've got some, oh, I, I passed the best goldfish in the store. So we've got some assorted goldfish, but where did I see them? I saw pandas. They're over on the other side, yeah. I was looking at these earlier and I realized I just glossed over them because I was too busy showing you guys discus. I love the panda, the panda butterfly tails. Do they stay a true black tail? Nope. <laughs> I was gonna say like, they look amazing, but this won't be their final form. Usually you gotta give them like the five inch mark if they're gonna stay this way. They're still gonna be amazing fish. But a lot of times they'll turn all white with a little bit of black or a little bit of orange in there. So they're not quite what we want. But when they're already five inches, you're like, oh, that's a $300 fish where those are like 20 bucks or 30 bucks. So it's, you know, you gotta, you gotta take, take it with how much you're paying. Nice freshwater mollies is definitely on my list to breed once I get to the new house. Wanna play with mollies a lot. So that's on there. This is a, a fish I saw come in an unboxing and I was like, wow, we haven't had those a long time. 
and it's the Malayan yellow pygmy cat. You can see one hanging out in the back and a bunch right here underneath the sponge. They're just like this little hovering schooling catfish that are fun. The problem is they're 849, so you gotta, you know, you gotta drop 50 bucks on them, but you got a cool little school. Ooh, and here we've got uh, Pissagrama cockatoides super reds. These are locally bred because they got a blue tag, and you can see we've got males, and then we've got females. So you've got that female right there, and you've got that orange colored female over there, and I just heard Murphy. He finally went to Chomp Town on the harder clams. Look at him, he had Thanksgiving dinner, his belly's so big. Yeah, I knew you'd get to it. Looks like you got one more to work on. I'll be listening. Ooh, we got a bunch of assorted rainbows. These are mostly turquoise rainbows down here. Turquoise are nice because male and female both look amazing. So, I like it. Got Brazil green Moscow guppies mixed with the Chorpre Danio or the orange glow light Danio. We've got Philippine blue angelfish locally bred. Ooh, and the spot of blue eye rainbow. We've got another tank here. I believe these are all from Randy and Dean between these two tanks. <clears throat> these ones are a little bit larger. Not bad at all. Oh, I wonder if they're gonna start laying eggs on that thing. Sort of guppy tank, kind of a standard. Down low, this is a fun tank because this is an unheated tank. <clears throat> so we've got golden dojo loaches, giant danios, and then this here we've got an anabantoy, which is a paradise fish. That's a fish that uh, is basically like a betta that doesn't need heat. So kind of a fun tank in that you could have this and not have to have a heater on it year round. Something different. Ooh, these are nice. These teacup platies, they've got the black tail, so they're like a teacup uh, wag platy. I've only got the full red ones. Can't take them home, but I want them so bad. You see the the cribs here they've got the nigerian red pair that female with the color is amazing and the male over here not as colorful <clears throat> so if you like fish and you're tired of the females looking drab get cribs females always look better i hear murphy he's getting the last one <clears throat> there we go he got it he had to wait for it to digest you know all right, a lot of ember tetras mixed with the honey garami. Longfin cherry barbs? No, just normal. They look a little long, though. But they look good. Over here, we've got... These came out... I can't believe that there are a lot in everyone's tanks. The Apisto Agazizii Fire Reds. Those came out like two or three years ago. Were all the rage. We still sell a ton, but... Not that many people breed them, even though they sell so well. More rainbows. Look down here. Diamond head neon tetras. Oh, yeah. It's focusing on the rainbow, of course. A lot of rainbows. Someone must have dropped those ones off. That's a kind of an odd assortment there. The world supply of Florida flagfish. This is a great algae eating fish here for like hair algae, blackbeard algae all that kind of stuff. And then we've got some zigzag eels. Nice. We even have one that's out and about. We got one that's hidden right there. See his tail behind him. Rainbows for katas with reticulated hillstream loaches. I'm just gonna say right now, I feel bad for whoever put these in this tank because someone has to catch the reticulated hillstream loaches off the bottom floor. It's already a pain enough. It's much better when they're mid-level so you can at least stand up while you gotta spend the hour catching them. Pistogram Panduros are super cool. You can see right here. Lots of color. And they're easy to read too. Looks like we have both male and female in here, which is not always easy to get. Got some for as hard as it is to get fish right now, we've actually got some pretty cool fish. Celebeats rainbows with some dwarf nanakara. That's what these guys are down here. Good looking fish. These guys are super cool because they're long fin rosy barbs. This is a very fun fish to breed outdoors. They can go super cold. They don't, well not super cold, but pretty cold. They don't have to be heated in your own fish room. They're great at eating algae. So if you got hair algae issues, 
The males get all the color and the extra long fins. The females just get extra long fins and they're more of an olive green or gold. But you get that nice display of two different fish and these aren't full grown, but when they're full grown, they're magnificent. So yeah, this is most what we got on the floor, but because we have a hard time getting stuff and uh, it's been selling, let's take a look at the quarantine room. What is that? It's a big cichlid in there. This is the drop off tank. What is this guy? I don't even know what that is. Maybe it's like a rainbow cichlid or something. Where's it? Oh, that's a snakeskin grommy right there. I thought you meant like an actual giant oh, no, no, grommy. Giant, I was like, giant. whoa. Yeah, so it's, people must be moving or. Yeah, we got to get it all into quarantine. Well, we, it's in quarantine. Got to treat it all. Then we put it like basically in the dollar bin of like, just give it a good home. You know, it's probably a little bit of a tornado in here with the multiple rainbow sharks that are full grown in the 40 gallon. But. Yeah, it's holding its own. Then we've got all stuff that's like newer to come in that we want to put meds through. That's why you can see on the top, you'll see a bunch of bubbles because meds, right? So in here, we've got a bunch of rainbow sharks all through the back. Neon tetras, autosynclus, more neon tetras, more autosynclus. Some goldfish that need a little TLC, so they're hanging out. Got more guppies going on down there. Feeder snails because we feed lots of snails to puffers. In fact, it's time to feed that hairy puffer. Got to do it. Let's see if the hairy puffer will eat. Oh, so I'm going to grab these. I'm going to go feed Mr. Harry. I'm going to put these in there and we'll see if, if our buddy will, will do it. Yeah, he does have a full belly to eat, huh? Come on, buddy. All right, and here we've got a bunch of algae eaters. So we've got Siamese algae eaters, we've got bristle nose, and that's it, really. But we've got adults and babies. Lots of algae needs to go into there. Up here, looks like we've got super red apistos, and then glow light tetras. A lot of times they'll come in where their fins are like nipped up. This quarantine process helps make sure they don't get infected and then they heal up before we sell. Over here we've got black neons. Then we go to cardinal tetra tank number one, cardinal tetra tank number two, cardinal tetra tank number three, and then we've got some guys in here not doing so well. So they've got lots of heat and meds in the water. So you've got rams, you've got a, a green phantom pleco. A lot of times when stuff comes in too skinny, we have to really rehab them. And so that's where they, they're gonna get fed a few times a day and everything. In here, we've got Celestial Pearl Danios, looking pretty good. Follow up with some platies and QT. Lots of Corydoras down low. Julii here with gold and white clouds. Some loaches. I'm not sure what type of loach that is, not zebras. It's like a serpent loach. We've got salt and pepper corridors, panda corridors, and then we've got a lizard loach over here, which is, I don't think we've ever had those in the store before. And then we've got stir by corridors. So yeah, there's, oh, what's in here? Looks like exclamation point rasboras. So that's the store tour in the middle of summer. I gotta say, we're doing pretty good for the middle of summer. It's hard to get fish in the summer anyway, being that it's the end of summer and we've got COVID going on. The store actually looks pretty good fish selection wise, which is great, which hopefully means a good, you know, like a good winter season coming up. I hope, I hope airports start moving a little freely. Dang, those Odessa barbs look amazing from over here. We skipped them earlier. Looking real good. Nice. And then down here, these angels looking good too. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to do a new thing I've never done before, and that is... Don't you love it when there's a giveaway that's actually hassle-free? So do we. So we're going to give away five care packages every week just because we want to give back. All you have to do, be a subscriber, hit the like button, 
and leave a comment. From there, our app will do the rest. We'll send those packages out anywhere in the world, no matter how much it costs us, and we're going to do it every week. So the sooner you become a subscriber and you participate, the more chance you'll have to win. Good luck, and for more details, check out the description down below. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.